Deep beneath the ocean, where the Earth's crust is born and destroyed, there lies a hidden story of gold. Ophiolites, fragments of ancient oceanic plates thrust onto land, carry not only strange ultramafic rocks, but also a surprising secret. Gold can be trapped within their fractured, altered interiors. In these hostile, magnesium-rich rocks, hydrothermal fluids carve pathways, react with the mantle's minerals, and sometimes leave behind pockets of gold that challenge everything we think we know about where precious metals can form. If you want to understand how gold can appear in the most unexpected geological places, ophiolite-hosted deposits are one of the most intriguing chapters in Earth's history. What makes ophiolites a gold host? Ophiolites are fragments of oceanic crust and upper mantle that have been pushed onto continental margins through tectonic collision. They represent a rare glimpse into the deep parts of the Earth that are normally hidden beneath the ocean. While ophiolites are commonly known for their unique composition, Primarily ultramafic rocks such as peridotite and serpentinite, they are also significant in economic geology because they can host gold mineralization. Understanding why ophiolites become gold hosts requires examining their structure, chemistry, and tectonic history. The first key reason ophiolites can contain gold is their structural complexity. Oceanic crust is not a uniform layer. It is highly fractured, faulted, and cut by numerous shear zones. When ophiolites are abducted onto continents, they experience intense deformation. This deformation creates networks of fractures, breccias, and faults that act as conduits for hydrothermal fluids. Gold is rarely deposited in a homogeneous rock mass. Instead, it precipitates where fluids can flow and react with surrounding rocks. In ophiolite terrains, these fluid pathways are abundant, which increases the chance of gold deposition. The second reason is related to the unique chemistry of ultramafic rocks. Ultramafic rocks are rich in magnesium and iron and low in silica. When these rocks interact with water, especially seawater during the oceanic stage or meteoric water after uplift, they undergo serpentinization. Serpentinization is a process in which water penetrates the rock, causing mineral changes and releasing hydrogen, methane, and other reduced species. These reactions also generate heat and create a highly reactive environment. Such conditions are favorable for the formation of hydrothermal systems that can carry dissolved gold. The fluids produced during serpentinization are not only hot, but also chemically capable of transporting gold through complexation with sulfur and chloride. A third factor is the presence of sulfur and metal-rich sulfides in ophiolytic environments. Gold is often transported in hydrothermal fluids as gold-sulfide complexes. When these fluids encounter reduced sulfur or iron-rich minerals, Gold can precipitate as native gold or as microscopic inclusions within sulfide minerals such as pyrite, chalcopyrite, and arsenopyrite. Ophiolites commonly contain sulfide-bearing units, especially in the transition zones between ultramafic rocks and overlying mafic crust. These sulfide zones become natural traps where gold can accumulate. Another important aspect is the role of fluid rock interaction and alteration. In ophiolite-hosted systems, Hydrothermal fluids often cause intense alteration of the host rocks. This alteration can produce minerals such as serpentine, talc, carbonate, chlorite, and magnetite. The alteration itself is a record of fluid movement and can indicate the presence of mineralizing systems. Carbonate alteration, in particular, is commonly associated with gold mineralization in ophiolytic settings. When CO2-rich fluids react with ultramafic rocks, Carbonate minerals form and can create zones of increased permeability. These carbonate zones often coincide with gold-bearing structures. Finally, the tectonic setting of ophiolites is essential. Ophiolites are formed at mid-ocean ridges and later transported to continental margins. Their formation and emplacement involve subduction, collision, and uplift, processes that generate the necessary heat and pressure to drive hydrothermal circulation. Additionally, ophiolite belts are often located near major tectonic boundaries, where crustal stress and deformation continue after emplacement. This ongoing tectonic activity can reactivate faults and sustain fluid flow, prolonging the period during which gold can be transported and deposited. In summary, ophiolites become gold hosts due to a combination of structural, chemical, and tectonic factors. Their fractured nature provides pathways for fluid flow, their ultramafic composition supports serpentinization and fluid generation, sulfide zones offer traps for gold, alteration creates permeability and indicators for mineralization, and tectonic processes supply the heat and deformation necessary for hydrothermal systems.
Together, these elements create a unique environment where gold can form in rocks that were once part of the oceanic mantle, making ophiolite-hosted deposits one of the most intriguing and complex types of gold mineralization on Earth. How Gold Forms in Ultramafic Environments Gold is one of the most chemically inert elements on Earth, yet it frequently appears in locations that seem unlikely at first glance. Ultramafic environments, dominated by magnesium-rich mantle rocks such as peridotite and serpentinite, are among these unexpected hosts. The formation of gold in ultramafic settings is not a single process but rather a sequence of geological events involving fluid generation, rock alteration, and mineral trapping. Understanding this process requires exploring how ultramafic rocks interact with water, heat, and tectonic stress to create conditions suitable for gold deposition. The first step in gold formation within ultramafic rocks is serpentinization, a process where water reacts with mantle-derived minerals. Ultramafic rocks contain abundant olivine and pyroxene, which are highly reactive with water. When water infiltrates these rocks, often along fractures or fault zones, it transforms olivine into serpentine minerals. This reaction releases heat, hydrogen, and other reduced gases, creating a chemically active environment. Serpentinization is not only a mineral transformation, it is a powerful source of hydrothermal fluids. These fluids can migrate through the rock, carrying dissolved metals and forming hydrothermal systems similar to those found near mid-ocean ridges. As serpentinization progresses, the environment becomes increasingly favorable for fluid circulation and gold transport. The hydrothermal fluids generated in ultramafic settings are typically rich in sodium, chloride, and sulfur, which are key components for transporting gold in solution. Gold is often carried as a complex with sulfur, e.g., OHS, or chloride, e.g., OCl2. The ability of these fluids to dissolve and transport gold depends on temperature, pressure, pH, and the presence of ligands such as sulfur and chloride. In ultramafic environments, the fluids tend to be highly alkaline due to reactions with magnesium-rich minerals, which can influence gold solubility and mobility. A critical moment in gold formation is when these gold-bearing fluids encounter a chemical or physical trigger that causes gold to precipitate. In ultramafic systems, several triggers can lead to gold deposition. One common trigger is a drop in temperature as fluids ascend toward cooler zones near the surface. Another trigger is a change in chemical conditions, such as a shift in pH or redox state. Ultramafic rocks are rich in iron and sulfur, so when hydrothermal fluids interact with these minerals, they can cause reduction reactions that destabilize gold complexes and force gold to precipitate. For example, when gold-bearing fluids meet sulfide minerals like pyrite or arsenopyrite, gold can be captured and incorporated into the sulfide structure. Sulfide mineralization plays a central role in ultramafic gold systems. Gold rarely forms large, pure nuggets in these environments. Instead, it is commonly found as microscopic inclusions within sulfide minerals or as fine grains along fractures and grain boundaries. Pyrite is one of the most important sulfides in these systems because it can incorporate gold during its growth. In many ultramafic-hosted deposits, Gold is associated with arsenian pyrite, where arsenic stabilizes the crystal structure and provides sites for gold inclusion. These sulfide minerals often form within zones of intense alteration, such as talc carbonate or serpentine-rich bands, which can be identified during field exploration. Another key process in ultramafic environments is carbonation, where carbon dioxide-rich fluids react with ultramafic rocks to form carbonate minerals like magnesite and calcite. Carbonation can increase permeability and create distinct alteration zones that act as traps for mineralizing fluids. These carbonate-rich zones are commonly associated with gold mineralization in ophiolitic settings. The combination of serpentinization and carbonation creates a complex network of reactive rocks, each providing opportunities for gold-bearing fluids to precipitate gold. Finally, tectonic forces and structural features are essential for sustaining gold formation. Ultramafic rocks often exist in tectonically active regions, such as ancient subduction zones and collisional belts. Faults and shear zones not only provide pathways for fluid flow but also create pressure and temperature gradients that drive hydrothermal circulation. Repeated deformation can reactivate these pathways, allowing multiple pulses of mineralizing fluids to pass through the same area, gradually concentrating gold over time. In summary, gold formation in ultramafic environments is driven by serpentinization, fluid generation, sulfide trapping, carbonation, and tectonic fluid pathways. Each step is interlinked, forming a dynamic system where ultramafic rocks become not just passive hosts,
but active participants in the mineralization process. The result is a distinctive type of gold deposit that reflects the unique chemistry and structure of the Earth's mantle-derived rocks. Exploration and Economic Potential of Ophiolite-Hosted Gold Ophiolite-hosted gold deposits are a distinctive and sometimes overlooked category of gold mineralization. They are not as widely known as orogenic gold systems or epithermal deposits, but they can represent significant economic potential, especially in regions where ophiolitic belts are extensive. Exploration for gold in ophiolite settings requires a different approach than traditional gold exploration because the host rocks and alteration styles are unique. Understanding these differences is essential for identifying targets, evaluating resources, and assessing economic viability. The first step in exploration is regional geological mapping. Ophiolite belts are often long, linear features that can extend for hundreds of kilometers. Mapping the distribution of ultramafic rocks, mafic units, and associated shear zones is fundamental. In ophiolitic terrains, gold mineralization is typically associated with specific structural zones, such as faults, thrust contacts, and breccia bodies. Identifying these structures is crucial because they represent the pathways through which mineralizing fluids migrated. In addition, mapping alteration zones, such as serpentinization, talc carbonate alteration, and silicification, helps narrow down potential gold-bearing areas. After mapping, the next stage is geochemical sampling and analysis. Because gold in ophiolite-hosted systems often occurs in fine grains or as inclusions within sulfides, it can be difficult to detect through surface sampling alone. Geochemical methods therefore focus not only on gold but also on pathfinder elements such as arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and copper. These elements are commonly enriched in ultramafic-hosted gold systems and can indicate proximity to mineralization. Soil sampling, stream sediment sampling, and rock chip sampling are commonly used. In many cases, geochemical anomalies are subtle, so high-sensitivity analytical techniques and careful sampling strategies are essential. Geophysical methods also play an important role in exploration. Magnetic surveys are particularly useful because ultramafic rocks often carry strong magnetic signatures due to minerals such as magnetite. Variations in magnetic intensity can highlight structural features, alteration zones, and mafic ultramafic contacts that may host gold. Gravity surveys can also identify dense ultramafic bodies and structural disruptions. In addition, induced polarization IP, surveys can detect sulfide zones, which may host gold. Combined geophysical and geochemical data help build a robust exploration model that guides drilling and detailed investigation. Drilling is the most definitive exploration method, but it must be carefully planned. Ophiolite-hosted gold deposits are often structurally controlled and may occur in narrow zones. Therefore, drill programs need to target interpreted fault zones, breccia bodies, and alteration halos. Core logging focuses on identifying sulfide mineralization, alteration minerals, and structural features. Detailed petrographic analysis and geochemical assays help determine the style of mineralization and potential gold grades. In some cases, gold is associated with carbonate alteration or serpentine-rich zones, so recognizing these patterns is critical. The economic potential of ophiolite-hosted gold depends on several factors. First is the grade and continuity of mineralization. Because gold may be fine-grained and distributed in sulfides, the average grade can vary significantly over short distances. This makes resource estimation challenging. Second is the mining and processing feasibility. Ultramafic rocks can be hard and abrasive, which increases mining costs. Serpentinized rocks can also be unstable, requiring additional ground support. Processing can be complicated by high magnesium content and the presence of sulfides, which may require specialized milling and flotation techniques. However, when high-grade zones are identified, these challenges can be outweighed by the value of the gold. Another economic consideration is the geopolitical and environmental context. Ophiolite belts often occur in mountainous and remote regions, where infrastructure is limited. Building access roads, power supply, and water management systems can add substantial cost. Environmental management is also critical, especially because ultramafic rocks can produce acidic drainage when sulfides are exposed. Responsible exploration and mining practices are therefore essential to minimize ecological impact. In summary, ophiolite-hosted gold deposits offer intriguing exploration opportunities and potential economic value, but they require specialized methods and careful evaluation. 
mapping, geochemistry, geophysics, and targeted drilling form the core of successful exploration. Economic viability depends on grade continuity, mining and processing challenges, and the logistical context. For these reasons, ophiolite-hosted gold is not a simple deposit type, but one that rewards careful scientific study and strategic exploration.